And we are back, folks. Another edition of Steady Dropping Dimes. Been looking forward to this one because I always love doing this show. I love love my fellas, love my guys. You got producer Ben. Folks, give it up for producer Ben. Producer Ben, whenever producer Ben isn't around, I make mistakes trying to run the show, right? So producer Ben is here today, which means things are going to flow more smoothly. And I need things to flow more smoothly because I need to concentrate some energy on talking about my Lions beating up on those Saints. That is a major topic of today's show that we're going to get into today because I recall saying, man, the Saints don't have anything for the Lions. The Saints are overrated. The Saints don't really have a good quarter. They have an okay quarterback. Lions can make okay quarterbacks look, look better than they really are. But what do the Saints really have other than Alvin Kamara? I remember saying all these things. And I remember one of my guys, one of my boys, one of my brothers kind of saying, no, nah, Lions don't want anything from the Saints. Saints going to get that game. We Y'all got lost to Our receivers were hurt. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get into that, of course, a little bit later on in the show. We got playoffs to talk. We got a lot to get into on today's show. But before we do, we always start things out by shouting out. Who makes this show possible? Our friends at Destination Ann Arbor, your tour guides to all things Ann Arbor. We tell you all the time that there are, there are places to go, places to stay, you know, different, different areas to visit that people might not be familiar with, even those who live in Washtenaw County. Destination Ann Arbor opens the door to all of that. And as we announced recently, they have uh, started to sign players up, NIL deals, Will Johnson being the first. And very soon we're going to be going on his My Ann Arbor tour. So he mentioned the Slurping Turtle that he's going to take us to. Devin, you seem to know what that was all about. I have no idea. So that, <clears throat> we're going to be broadening my horizons there. I was talking to his mom, who's doing a great job. See, you got to shout out the moms. You know, because Will, Will, the turnover buffs, the whole turnover buff line, like he, my man has school. He has to be prepared to be all Big Ten corner. He can't be running his brand. He can't be doing his, his, you know, all of his apparel. His mom is doing all that. His mom is handling all of his marketing. His yeah, mom he's busy, is, busy kind of like you, Sam. You super busy, so you can't be doing your own work. Yeah, man. Hey, and she, and when I say she is on it, copy is on it. Whether it's getting stuff to Charles, getting stuff to us, and Devin, she's like, is Devin ever going to wear the bus? I said, you got to understand. I don't have none. Devin That's is the problem. Oh, so I don't we get, have none. We get you the buffs, you'll put them on? I'll put. Because <laughs> I know you high maintenance. Hey, hey, man, DG. I mean, uh, Daniel, man, the man will not fly unless we put him in first class. He said, listen. What? Oh, oh hey. Come on, DG. Don't tell me you come on, man. You're not, you're not, you high maintenance. Rose pedals at his feet, man. <laughs> Rose pedals at his feet. I mean, he did have his own bus, right? So he did, but he but he had to go see one of his proteges. So so tell us okay. about, about the, you know, I got a lot that I want to jump around, but I want you to be able to shout out your guys. Tell us about the Quan Finn. I know he he entered the portal. So for people who aren't familiar with the young fella. With the young King fella, with the young Toledo fella, former Toledo fella, tell the people about what he brings to the table. Yeah, man, a lot of teams, you know, making making a call to him. He's a runner thrower, right? What college football has right now, and what the NFL is going to, right? No more standstill guys. And uh, he gave Ohio State fits, so they're probably going to be calling soon. And I, you know, I'm just he can't he can't go to Ohio State, man. You can't do it. You can't do it. Everywhere else is all good, but. Uh, he's getting a lot of interest and everything like that. And, and I'm actually in Orlando right now. Went to go watch some kid football, eight-year-old football here in Orlando, playing for some national championship stuff. So uh, the kids are doing good. The kids are doing good from the youngest to the oldest. The oldest in the transfer portal, the youngest trying to win a national championship. Yeah, there you go, DG. DG the teacher. I, I will say this. I give DG love the kids. I give him a whole lot of – just my guy. I give my guy static just like y'all give me static there all the go. time. Right? <laughs> Man, I'm about to give you a compliment. We we'll see. We we'll see. I'm about to give you a compliment. It's First of all, up. I say, don't I say all the time how proud I am every time I see you on TV? Do I not say that? Like, yeah, I and like, it's always followed by some propaganda. It is not. I said, man, I'm so proud of this dude. Like, man, that's 
that's my guy right there. And then I watch the influence, the impact that you have on kids. Like, you don't tell them what they want to hear all the time. You tell them what they need to hear. And Any other time, honestly. <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not a common coaching trait. Now, there is that. There's that kind of coaching trait. And then there's the kind of coaching trait where it's never my fault. It's always someone else's fault. Now, and then we'll, we'll come back around to the Maya Ann Arbor shoot and going into different places I was going to mention that uh, were one of the places that we're going to be stopping with Will is the Blue Leprechaun. So we'll talk about the Blue Lep in the I Love Ann Arbor segment of this show. It's one of the great, one of the many great places in Ann Arbor that you can go and hang out. But you see Kyle McCord is in the port. You said, don't please don't go to Ohio State. Ohio State's looking for a quarterback, DG. Mm-hmm. Ohio State is looking for a quarterback. You went into this over on the Monday morning quarterback. So how does this man lose one game and jump in the portal? You know how he loses one game and jumps in the portal, Daniel Horton? Here's how. When the coach makes sure that it's never his fault. Mm. And I've, I've already blamed the coaches on defense, all right, and changed all them out. I'm looking on offense. I can't really blame anybody on offense because my offensive coordinator doesn't really coordinate. Right? He's not coordinating like my man the Boomer at all. At all. You know what I mean? It's, it's totally whack. How his 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 coordinator tag is a paycheck. Yeah. It's not an actual duty. He's not actually serving that function. So you can't right. blame that because he's he's calling the plays. He being Ryan Day. Yeah. So now who you gonna blame? Who you gonna blame, Daniel? You gotta blame the players. And who's the player that has direct control over the plays being executed correctly? The quarterback. The quarterback. That man lost yeah. one game, Danny. And he is back. He is in the portal right now as one of the most successful quarterbacks in the Big Ten. De- Devin pointed out that his stats are better than JJ. He did. He's not better than JJ, but he yeah, pointed but out I, his I stats are better than JJ. Yeah, yeah no, that's, that's that's good. Better, but yeah, yeah. Now nah, that's crazy to see that you know the coach and the, the program and the, even the fans. Like when you read the different things that's out there on the internet, you see the fans have even turned against the kid. Like man. If you go 11 and one and you get like as, as a future quarterback or a future recruit of that program, what does that say to those guys? Like, Hey, you can go 11 and one in Ohio state and still get ran out the building. That's, that is a bit, that's a bit absurd to me. Yeah, what and, and Dan, we we expect, Dan, we expect it from the fans, right? But you don't expect it from your own dude. that's supposed to have your back that had a little culture malpractice in some people's eyes himself. You don't expect it from him. You expect him to have your back and say, hey, we lost this together. Let's roll together. And I just I, I can't understand. Like, like like Sam said, his stats are better than what J.J. was able to do. Right. His he, he didn't lose any games except for obviously the one that matters the most, of course. And, right. and so last year you can't blame C.J. Stroud. You can't. C.J. Stroud has not finalist. C.J. Stroud is going to go on to maybe be in the MVP conversation at the NFL level. You can't blame him. So you blame the, you know, the coordinator, you blame all these people. But um, I, I just I just cannot see a world that we're living in where a guy who goes 11-1 and one at a major program, um, First year throws for 3,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, uh, not a whole bunch of interceptions, um, plays well. I mean – yeah. Is he the most dynamic guy? I thought they should play Devin Brown just because he can move around just a little bit more. But not he's not the most dynamic guy. But the, 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 his fans hate him. Yeah. It is unbelievable. And obviously, his coach is not too fond of him either. Exactly. No, it's, yeah. you could, and you've heard the rumors about them recruiting other guys in the portal even before the season ended. Like it's it's kind of yeah. crazy how they you know. I think they're gonna find know. out that grass ain't always green on the other side, right? They're gonna get a guy who don't understand the culture, don't understand what they're trying to do on offense, don't can't execute the way they want to, and they're going to yeah. go down a rabbit hole of, wait a minute, we are even further away from beating Michigan than we were mm-hmm. with Kyle McCord, and Kyle McCord is somewhere having at least minimal success uh, and living his best life. So, Sam, let me ask you something. Did they choose McCord over J.J.? They, they did. did. They absolutely right. did. Yes. Like kind of sneakily was, too, like kind of sly about yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, JJ was an Ohio State guy initially, man. He was, and they well, they pivoted. Now they got you know it's one of those things where 
you get a five-star quarterback and Marvin Harrison. That was his high school quarterback. So I'm not saying that it was the right choice. So it's been coaching malpractice for a while now. It's, yeah, but man, here's the <laughs> you thing. hear Marvin Harrison talking about he might go on the portal or, or go to NFL. The portal was an option for him, is what he was he was what he's putting out there. That's crazy. Wow. So here's here's the thing, man. You know, I think JJ is a great player, but man, I I just wonder what it would be like if he had gone there and there were some and he didn't beat Michigan. Mm. Right. I think he would get the same treatment. I think he performed better, but he gets the same treatment. Think about CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud was catching strays for not beating Michigan. He was throwing right? 400 yards against Michigan, still losing. Oh, I was still saying that. <laughs> it was not CJ Stroud's fault that they didn't beat Michigan. I'm just telling you. Right. Well, he would have been catching blame if you couldn't blame the D. Somebody has to take the blame, is the mm. point with Ryan Day. And my mm. question to you as players is when does that start to resonate? with you guys or your brethren when do players start to see stuff like that so i give you another example of a coach now i don't know if this is habitual if this is something that happens commonly but i bring it up because it's related to michigan mm -hmm. there's a kid named raylan wilson that was committed to michigan out of tallahassee for this dude is a phenomenal athlete he was a, as a linebacker running a sub 1100 meter i think they said he ran like a 10 800 meter I mean, just blazing speed. He was commit. He committed to Michigan over the entire SEC. I remember when they got him, I was like, man, wow, this is outstanding. Now, will they be able to hold on to him? Ultimately, like ultimately, they were not able to. Uh, you know, he decommitted from Michigan. He was a five-star prospect, the number three linebacker in the country. He mm. flipped. He's 6'2", 215 pounds, mm. and he flipped his commitment to the Georgia Bulldogs. So we know the Georgia Bulldogs lost to the Alabama Crimson Tide, right? So in his post game, Kirby Smart explained why they lost. And he pointed to a touchdown that happened in the set they gave up in the second quarter. This is Kirby Smart. He said, quote, we busted the coverage with a freshman linebacker in there that they ran a wheel route on. He is in the game because the two, the other two are down and they hit a wheel route for the touchdown. And then we gave him a field goal off the turnover. That was plus 10 points. Right Portal. there. So he just threw Portal. <laughs> Portal, I'm not playing this game. I'm not playing as you making $10 million, $9 million, $8 million, and you're going to blame me and blame one play when we had a full game and we were beat. Portal. Yeah, who called the wide receiver the reverse that they fumbled inside the 10-yard line? Portal. Like, <laughs> so that's yeah, why not, I'm but to ask you, man. Do now, you to answer have... your question, you notice immediately, Sam. Like, as a player, like, it just depends on, like, nowadays, players have options, right? So they can jump in, like Devin said, jump in the portal and stuff like that happens. But back in, I hate to talk to the old guy, back in my day, you couldn't move so freely. So it, you it, you would be surprised at how many guys you talk to that, you know, you had to be tough enough to, to deal with that and fight through that and hopefully come out the other side and and, and prove your coach wrong. But it's definitely – it's it's a good thing they they have options now because when it happens you can if you know if it bothers you that much you can leave. But this is the thing: you making nine million dollars. People watching the game don't understand that that's that kid's fault, right? They don't truly know how the inning inner workings. Only way they know is if you put it out there. You tell them, right? So right. now you look like a front runner to me because Kirby Smart's not fighting for his job. Kirby Smart, none of that. Kirby Smart won back to back uh, national championships. You are perfectly fine. No, you're not going anywhere, at least for the next five to ten years, right? Yeah. They love you there, and you're going to be competitive. What? What do you? Why do you have to throw a a, a 19, 18 year old under the bus for? Why in the public media? Now, when we get in the meetings, hey. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you got to do, hey man, you are part. Yeah, come on, man. What are we doing? We can't have this. No, but it's nothing in the for media, him to be like, hey. Why are we bringing more, putting this heat on this guy? Yeah. Portal, portal. I don't know what I'm talking about. Portal. No, nah, you're you're absolutely right, Devin. It's, it's it could have been it was it could have been it would have been nothing for Kirby Smart to say, hey, we could have put our players in a little better position on their play, or we could have made a done something different on our end to put them in a, to give them a better chance to be successful in that game situation, right? It's a lot of things he could have said as a head coach. And you're right for him to single out a freshman. Like first of all, we all understand you put a freshman in those situations and high leverage situations in college football. Nine times out of ten, unless they're just special, they're not going to succeed in that situation, right? So for you to 
you knew that going in, so you could definitely could have gave a better answer. That's that's a bit of yeah, self serving in that Listen, moment. I don't leadership follow- leadership malpractice. Yeah, yes. I I don't follow Kirby Smart to, enough to know if he does that all the time. So let me be clear. But it caught my attention because it was Raylan Wilson. Yeah, and he was committed to Michigan, and man, he gets on the field as a freshman. Yeah, and they I mean they this game cost them a spot in the playoffs. Like this is. They win that game there in the playoffs, period. They lose it. They're out. And so, to Devin's point, man, even if you take it totally on, on the chin, ain't nobody going to do anything to you. Right? They're going to they gonna focus on, oh, we got screwed. They gotta, they're not going to point at Kirby Smart. I just feel like that's one of those situations where you're a shit. Well, you got your, your players back. Now, he maybe he does the majority of the time. I'm yeah. going back to Ryan Day, though. Clearly. Clearly right here, Kyle McCord is saying, this dude didn't have my back. I got, I'm taking I'm taking bullets from, obviously, all these Michigan guys, but my own people, Ohio State, and the coach not getting up here, shielding me, saying, it's not his fault. It's yeah. not, it's, he's not the reason. I, I, I it's me. I'm the reason. Have you heard, Ryan? Culture. Have you heard, Ryan? They nine, to say. $10 million. Get you a nine, $10 million bulletproof vest and stand in front and take those bullets. Yeah. What are we doing? Bullets, man. And maybe, you know, maybe it's the culture, right? At Ohio State, it's a little bit of a softer country club type feel. Maybe down at Georgia. That's Kirby what they thought it was at Michigan. That didn't change, no. Hey, okay, well, so Kirby, listen, let me give you a Maybe contrast. Kirby Smart has that culture. We can call guys out and they respond to it. You yeah, know, you never know. And, and so, yeah, maybe, maybe they have that dynamic there where that's what they do. When they put it in a portal, if Raylan Wilson were to jump in the portal, that was or put it out there in the public, and if Raylan Wilson jumps in the, or doesn't jump in the portal, it'll it'll kind of lend itself to that. That's maybe that's just the coaching style. But Kyle McCord is in the portal; he is yeah. clearly sitting in the mess. And, and like eleven or thirteen other guys, right? It's a bunch of other guys. But but every team's going to have guys in the portal. It's when it's yeah. starters. Like he's a Kyle McCord is a starter. Julian Fleming is a former five star number one receiver. He's a starter. Like these dudes jumping in the portal, that says a little something different. And so, but I'm gonna give you a contrast, players. You guys wore the uniforms, you got heavily recruited. So you see examples like that of these guys and how maybe the coaches treated them or how they react in the coaches. And then you see Jim Harbaugh. So Jim Harbaugh a couple of years ago said, Hey, players should be able to transfer without sitting out. They shouldn't have to be penalized. Coaches can move around, coaches can go here or there with no problem, and nobody says anything about that, right? And so that rule, and they, nobody really was backing that up, but the rule came in, and granted, a whole lot of coaches don't like the transfer portal, but Jim is like, what's the problem with the transfer portal? Why should a dude have to stay someplace where he feels like he's not, it's not, you know, uh, in keeping with his success? He should be able to go where he wants to go, right? So now fast forward to last year. He was like, listen, you see this big contract the Big Ten Network just signed? We should be giving the players some of that, some of this TV money. It's how many millions of dollars these teams, $70 million, $67 million per team? Players should be getting some of that. Didn't hear any other coaches co-signing that, right? Then he went a step farther here this year, a couple weeks ago. Zach Zinner goes down in the game, breaks his leg, horrific injury. He, went to, he goes to visit him in the hospital, and he comes back. The next day, and he's in. A, and he says, "Look, I went. I watched that injury on the field. I went to watch him in the hospital. And I said, listen, it's what. Remember what I said before about players getting paid. It's time. The time is now mm-hmm. that for them to be getting some of this money. And we. T- I talked about the TV money, but you know what else? I'm willing to take less. Take some of my money if it means these players get paid more yeah. than they're be. They get compensated more than they're getting compensated right now. Now I'm here." If I'm a player, I wasn't a player, so I, this is why I'm asking y'all to step in these shoes. But if I'm a player and I see a dude doing that, I was like, oh, man, now that dude has my back. Yeah, That dude is, is standing on the table for me and mine and what I should get. I don't see other coaches standing out there saying that, you know, putting their – say, take some of my money. Yeah, get open up the transfer portal so guys can go whenever they want to go. I hear coaches saying all the time, say, hey, man, they need to put some restrictions on this on this transfer portal. It, it's just getting out of hand. We got we got to no nah, man. You got to make them have some kind of penalty uh, with this transfer portal. He's the only one that I see standing on the table for these positions, and I want to know why more players aren't recognizing that. I have no idea. 
I, I don't I don't get it. I mean, he's putting himself in a position where he should be getting all the recruits, right? Um, as as much as everybody's giving the bag, we we're learning that a lot of times the bag isn't what we thought it was, right. or the bag is more production based. Where if you produce, you might get the bag, but if you're not producing, what what, what bag? We don't we don't remember promising you a bag, right? And so he's he's putting himself out there and saying, "Hey, take some of my money." Now, let's be clear: I want to absolve him completely. He's got a lot of money. He's been making money for a long time, right? Yeah. So taking some money out of his pocket, that's no sweat off his back. How much money can you have? But he is still putting it out there and saying, "Hey, take some of my money, right? Give it to the players because they're the persons doing all the work. They are doing all." The work and uh, I just don't see how not only players but parents don't see that and say, "Wait, he is the first one to say you should be able to move around and do your thing, right? Mm-hmm. You should be able to get." He is the one that started the satellite camps, right? It seems like he's got a plan. He essentially he's a lawmaker in the Big Ten or in the nation, right? He is creating all the laws and everything. So you have to think that I mean, you see, the Big Ten just came out with a new proposal for uh, the ability for schools to pay their players. This is on the heels of Harbaugh kind of almost getting crucified like you messing up the product, man. You cannot keep messing up the product talking about giving them revenue sharing, right? right. So w- when you see that, if I'm a player, I'm like, first of all, it's Michigan. Let's be clear. They're, they're, that's really all you got to You can stop right there. It's Michigan. But secondly, it's Michigan going to playoff every year winning. The money now, is there. Michigan going to playoff every year winning. Guys going pro, they have probably 20 guys drafted that I've heard. And their coach is for the players, whether he means it or not. He's he's putting it out there and, and, and putting himself in the spotlight saying, I want the players to win. During the college football playoff interview, he like, oh, uh, don't forget, we need to play the players. <laughs> what? Like, I don't know. I, if I'm a player, I'm going to Michigan, probably. Yeah. And I would think. Yeah, I think it's um it's one of those situations where he says all the right things, but at the end of the day, if Michigan's not gonna open up the checkbooks and 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 back him up, you know what I mean, as far as supporting the program and in all the legal ways possible, building the NIL program, then it's just like families and recruits outside of the UM fan base look like oh he's just you know he's just talking like any other coach would that wants to. You know what I'm saying? So it has to be some. I think in order for us to in order for him to see the in order for us. Him to see the fruits of his genuine thoughts and actions and beliefs, I think he's going to have to have a little bit more support behind him when it comes to, you know, making sure players are taken care of as far as legally, right? I don't want to say break any rules, but, you know, that it has to be some support behind those, those words. Yeah, he – uh I remember during the – when he got his ex- – remember he signed the extension when there was a whole lot of people, a whole lot of players and fans and – uh, people in in leadership who wanted him fired after the 2020 season, and that was yeah. that was a time where War Manual kind of went against all that and signed him to an extension. But the extension was, you know, you gotta you gotta appease the 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 people who are critical of extending him at that point. And there were some people who were critical, was like, "Hey, man, what, what are you doing? It's time to move on." So he set up a contract where you can get your same money, but it's gonna be incentive based, right? So this is your base salary is 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 what 50 or 60 percent of what it was but you hit these benchmarks you get all the money right so jim hit all the benchmarks got all the money you know what he did with that with that money past his base salary he gave it it. back he gave it back to all the other people all the the people who were affected by COVID in the athletic department so he donated it to the athletic department for people whose salaries have been cut because all their salaries were cut during all our salaries were cut during COVID. and so he said look i'm I'm in a better position financially than the rest of these people. Give this the, the incentives to all those other all those other people. So when he says take my money, he's literally mm-hmm. had them take his money already. Yeah. Right? I mean, he's speaking from a position where I, I'm not just it's not just lip service. I've actually done this. Maybe so not he supported. There. So he supported the university in their time of need financially. So it's it's only right that they turn around and support him. Now, right, and especially the, everything that's happened this year, it's only right. It sounds See, man, like it's so, a man, so I, situation. I think we're talking to the people, because man, I, I've said this before, and, and let's apply it to JJ right now. Mm-hmm. Let's apply this to JJ right now. You know how you sometimes you have, you, you when you talk in and we're having a, a show, you're actually trying to speak to people, 
So I'm actually trying to speak to people beyond you guys right now. J.J. McCarthy is probably going to be. I, I think this is oh, my opinion. My opinion is he's likely to go to the NFL. That is my opinion. He has not said that. He is not talking uh, to his, his team, his coaches. about. They, they don't know. They're looking at quarterbacks in the portal right now, one of which is, you know, one of the guys who's considering Michigan is one of Devin's former protégés in Dante Moore. And I was talking to talking to his pops about it. I said, you know, oh, what about JJ? I mean, what do you know about JJ? He said, man, we gotta we gotta act like JJ is coming back because they don't know if JJ is coming back, right? So they can't go out in the portal and tell guys that hey, you know what? There's an open spot for you to compete for next year. They gotta say, hey, you might sit the bench for a year at this quarterback right. if our quarterback comes back because they don't know. So when I say he hasn't said. He hasn't said. But it's likely, in my opinion. Likely and definite are two different things. The possibility, Devin and Daniel, that he comes back demands a response. It demands a response. The, the money can as much as I talk about the money cannon with recruits, because I don't have a problem with recruits. Man, I... Just like Zach Zinner gets hurt on the on the on the what if you are a five star recruit and you break your leg like that you can never play again you think all those same scholarships are gonna be on the table why shouldn't the same rules apply for them why shouldn't they be able to monetize their ability in the way that college athletes are or the way that you see happening in certain other states other high school high school athletes in other states are earning money it should be universal let me get off that soapbox though let's get back to JT McCarthy. The mere possibility that he could come back to college demands a response. You, every money person known to man with an interest in Michigan athletics should be like, you know what? Here's my piece. Here, whatever that number is, this is what I got to contribute to the JJ comeback fund. JJ stay home fund. Like, because yeah. it gotta, it has to make, it has to make sense. Right, it, it has to make sense beyond development and increasing your your draft stock because I think he's a first round pick. It's just a matter of where. If and you had to put a number on it, what would it be? Not only that, you gotta you gotta find a way to compensate me and, and you and Dan. You know what I mean? I just feel like it should be an all like inclusive type deal where you know what I mean. I don't know. Maybe I'm tripping. I don't know. But I'm 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 a hundred percent in agreement with Devin right now. <laughs> you are tripping because I'm making a point and I'm serious about it. If I'm you got a chance, if you, like, man, listen, <laughs> if you got a chance to keep this dude, because from a development standpoint, Borges was just talking about this yesterday. He said, "Man, he could go and and be a first round pick and wind up in a great. Sometimes it's better to be a lower round first round pick because you wind up on a better team. You better can make team, that case." Yeah. But he said. You know, I feel like him having more throws, more volume at the college level could really, really help not yes. just his draft stock, but his development. He said, I really, really could see the, the progress he's made with Kirk Campbell from year one to year two under his tutelage. He said, I, I think it could be that much more for him if he were to come back a year. So he, he's making the case like he, it could make sense development wise for him to come back. But to me, Devin and Daniel, if it doesn't make sense dollar wise. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm on. I'm gonna take my chances of getting developed in the NFL, where, where I can start oh. collecting this check. But if you but what's can, the, what's the ahead, thing? Man. I think um, I saw something with Coach Board just said it, it increases his chances of get if he takes more snaps in college, it'll increase his chance of getting a better second contract, right? So it's like one of the things where do you go now and take the short term money, or do you go ahead and keep developing one more year and then now you set yourself up to be in the league for 10 to 15 years? Whether you're a starter or a backup, Chad Henney just retired and I went to school with Chad Henney. Yeah. <laughs> so. I guess I guess I just feel like if if the financial incentive isn't isn't there, mm -hmm. I, I I get you're talking about big picture, but if the financial incentive isn't there, are you are you passing up getting to your second contract sooner? You, I mean, you yeah. could get started toward your second contract right now. Yeah. And I understand that. And if I'm JJ, I'm believing I'm going to develop no matter where I go. I might be. That might be a little naive to believe that. Uh, but, hey, man, I believe in me. I'm going to bet on myself. I'm going to develop 
let me go ahead and get this clock started. Unless it can also make financial sense too. And so I'll get back to my point. You look at these other places, man, they just fired down in, in College Station uh, Jimbo Fisher. And they're paying this dude. They had to pay him $25 million right away. Like right now, 25, 25 million right now. That's and then wild. they got to pay him the rest, the other 50 million over the next couple of years. <laughs> and they say, all right, it's no problem. We got it. That wasn't the school. That was the people who support the school. We got it. Don't worry about it. Go get us another coach. So where you gotta is go. He got to go. He got to go. <laughs> right. So where is that That's guy? That or no, where are those people? Not guys. Where are those men and women? Those those people with, with of, of acclaim and resources to say, we got a chance to keep arguably the best quarterback in Michigan football history. We got a chance to keep him. Okay, we're going we gonna to make sure that we're making the best case possible. Now, far be it for me to spend out of somebody else's pocket, but I'm just making a comparative analysis here, fellas, yeah. and I'm telling you how they do it elsewhere and saying, man, if that don't happen with this guy, I was talking about Bryce Underwood. Now I'm talking about J.J. McCarthy. If that doesn't happen now, I just don't know that, that those resources are available here mm. in the way that they're available elsewhere. I can tell you that they're not. <laughs> not in, Michigan doesn't. Michigan doesn't have the the oil and gas money that those Texas A and M people have. Now it may be some very wealthy people within the Michigan fan base, but I can tell you that's a whole different. That's a I don't totally know, different. Daniel, all them buildings that we see getting built every day, it's some money somewhere. <laughs> people donating a lot yeah. of money. Yeah, now Michigan a definitely has a lot of resources. Don't get me wrong, but those Texas A and M, Texas, that. Central Texas oil and gas region. So that's that's a that's a whole different that's a whole different ball game, Sam. Well, that's what we're talking about when we talk about NIL support. That's what, what do you think NIL is? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's not the school paying it. these dudes. <laughs> we gotta find some oil and gas people now, fam. And I would oh, love man, I I put, <laughs> I, Like I said, I presume I'm not saying. What's that, the numbers now? What, yeah, but I say, what would the number be? Personally, this is my opinion: five million dollars. Oh, that could, that could be done. Five million dollars. That's what I'm saying. Like, said, like he's he not looking for fifty million, right? Five million dollars. Because the thing is, for for JJ and like I like you said, your opinion. This is my opinion. He would love, I mean, love to beat Ohio State again and watch Ryan Day find somebody else to blame. Essentially, right? He would love <laughs> to do that, right? And it's a lot of pros to returning, like Coach Ward just said. Um, there's a lot of pros to going as well, like like you said, Sam. So I think it's a win-win. But if you can help him win in that financial in his pocket, I think everything else take care takes care of itself because he wants to be at Michigan. He loves being at Michigan, right? He loves looking at Ryan Day, and then he gets to go to Columbus and do it again, right? He'll get a chance to play USC in all these different schools. I think that he would he would relish an opportunity to come back to Michigan and really cement himself as the unquestioned best quarterback in the history of Michigan football uh, and then go to the league and, and do what he's supposed to do there. You guys, so is, is that crazy? Is $5 million a crazy number? I mean, that, we're, we're talking about competing with the NFL, right? Yeah. Why is that crazy? I don't think it is at all. I don't think it is at all. Because the thing is, his signing bonus will, bonus will be much more than that, Right. But like I said, those other factors of like being able to beat Ohio State again and, and see Ryan Day blame somebody and being able to call your not necessarily call yourself, but have people look at you as the best quarterback in the history of Michigan football, uh, three time Big Ten champion or, or be four time Big Ten champion, never lost to Ohio State. Not a lot of quarterbacks walking around to play that Michigan that can say, hey, I'm a four time Big Ten champion and I never lost to Ohio State. It just it just hasn't happened. And he'll be able to do that and stand alone in that, I think. And so I just think that the uh, $5 million is, for the money that they are generating because of the success of the team, mm -hmm. $5 million is 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 nothing, right? Especially when it's not like it has to come from one pocket, right? Right, 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 right. It, it, many different pockets can go in on this and make sure. Now, the one thing you would say is, okay, does that $5 million, similar to a Matthew Stafford taking all the money from the Lions and not producing the way he should, does that take <laughs> all the money away from all the other players you could have around you, right? Oh, you know I got to – you know, I do not like Matthew Stafford. But uh, I digress. 
is is that five million because we're giving this quarterback so much taken away from the NIL capabilities and earning capabilities of all the other people around him? I don't think it would impact it that much, right? Just because a lot of what the Michigan players are doing is true NIL, where their face, image, and likeness is what's getting them paid. Um, but uh, I I think that five million is not too much in, yeah, in my opinion. And if you know JJ. You know, and this, this is not this is not anything he said. I, so I want to stress that that's not a number that he's that's not coming from him. That you you asked right. me my opinion on what it would take. So that mm -hmm. I want to strip as people are looking in the stream and you're reacting to five million dollars. That is not coming from JJ. Okay, I'm just looking at okay if he's in the lower range of the first round. I've seen him in the twenties, as low as the twenties. You know what are we talking about? What what number? What kind of number competes with that? And to me. Five million dollars. Yeah, because people think about the salary, uh, guys. Before he ever plays a down, he's gonna sign his name on a piece of paper, and it's gonna be twenty million dollars when he wakes up in the morning in his account. Direct deposit. He ain't gonna be like DG Sam. He ain't gonna ask for a check. It's gonna be direct deposit. Twenty five million, fifteen million, thirteen million, whatever the case may be. So that's what you're competing with. And, and in my opinion, because of you know what we've seen from him, I think that he would set. He would pass on thirteen million, take that five. And, and be able to do the things I talked about. Hey, Marvin yeah. Harrison Jr. is asking for more, right? I don't know what he's asking for. Oh, well, I don't want to say what he's asking. I just seen stuff that said he was eight to ten million or something. Yeah, well, he's gonna be a top back. five pick. And yeah, I that, think that's worth it. They should. Whoever, <laughs> whoever, you better pay that. So let me. So you think it's worth it for it's worth it for Ohio State to pay him to come back another year instead of just develop another Mar Marvin Harrison? Well, not Jr. not Ohio State, just because. You've had a chance to do it with him, and you can't do it. The one thing you need to do, you can't do it. So yeah. he's not helping. Right? I'm about to say, yeah, I'm I mean, say, as much as he's breaking, we, you know how we feel about him. They keep losing Ohio State with him. So right. paying him $10 million does nothing for you, in my right. opinion, especially since you're going to break in a new quarterback. Yeah, Dr. No, Udai Singh said, who is a loyal supporter of Dropping Dimes. We appreciate you, Doc. He said number 20 pick got $3.6 million last year. So, mm. hey, That's man. Lord, I thought. Yeah, me, me too. So maybe it's three million. Maybe the number is maybe, three million. Or maybe they just got to get close to it. It don't have to be three. Like you said, two million. Yeah, and the thing you got to know about JJ, like, you know, for instance, a lot of what he gets in NIL, like I think, was it was it his MDN jersey money? It's one of those. So I think it was his MDN jersey money, which, of course, he has the number one selling jersey. You know, he gave all that money to his, his offensive line. Sure. Mm -hmm. He should. You know what I, mean? I mean, that's the kind of dude. Smart. That's the kind of dude he is. So imagine that dude having three million dollars. I want to know what kind of dude he really is. I you like that aloe. Too. I need that aloe. I need an aloe coat. I need some aloe sweats. I will be seeing you in the aloe commercial with your little little rum machine and all that. And, you know what I mean? <laughs> Throwing the ball. Where's my aloe, uh, JJ? Huh? Huh? Well, Where's my aloe? Huh? You know what I see? I see it being the kind of culture of this team. So. For yeah. example, coming up this weekend, Blake Corm is having his first toy drive. Mm -hmm. Now, Blake's toy drive is going to be over at the Somerset Collection, North Grand Court. It's 11 a.m. until 1 p.m. this Saturday. All right. So, you know, you, you talk about a dude who's giving away turkeys. He has a rent relief uh, program he's supporting. He's doing so much to give back to the community. And this this time. This toy drive, the donations benefit the Detroit Rescue Mission Ministry. So he's going to go do this toy drive, and he's going to deliver the toys himself to the uh, to the Rescue Mission Ministries. And all you have to do is come and donate the toy. But they want to incentivize it even more because the biggest incentive is you're giving back, right? You're helping kids in the community. But they're going the extra mile. He's saying, you know what? You come and donate a toy. I'll take a picture with you. And so will my teammates. So Blake will be there. JJ will be there. You know, Will Johnson will be there. Mikey St. Ristol, Junior Colson. All those guys are going to be there doing this same thing that Blake got started with this toy drive. Now, uh, you can bring a toy or you can purchase a toy uh, on site over at the Somerset Collection. Lego Build-A-Bear and Toys R Us will be matching up to the first 100 toys, a value up to $25 per toy. So this is this is an outstanding opportunity and using their platform and using their NIL deals. So this event that Blake is putting on, 
is sponsored by Wolverine Boots. Blake signed a deal with Wolverine Boots last year, an NIL agreement with Wolverine Boots. Now, if you aren't familiar, uh, Wolverine is America's original boot brand established in 1883. They've been making boots for the nation's hardest workers for 140 years. If you know anything about Blake, we talked to his dad, James Corum, on on the uh, on my morning show a couple weeks ago. He's like, man, Blake grew up working in my landscaping business. He grew up on lawn equipment, tractors, skid steers, doing all that. So he's a blue collar dude. This is, I mean, wearing work blue, work boots and work clothes is this thing. So it was a natural thing for Wolverine Boots as they decided they wanted to get involved in NIL to start off with Blake. And then as you see the things that Blake is doing to support the community, they say, we want to support that. So they come and sponsor this event. And just like you want a teammate to do, you want a teammate to get open the door for himself and then hold it open for the other guy. So he signs his deal with Wolverine Boots in 2022. Did you know in 2023 that J.J. McCarthy signed a deal with Wolverine Boots. Junior Coaston signed a deal with Wolverine Boots. Mason Graham, Coaston Loveland signed a deal with Wolverine Boots. See, that's how it works. That's how it's supposed to work, right? You find a great partner, and then you turn your teammates on to that partner as well. And then you, 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 you partner with that partner to give back to the community. That's what's going on with this toy drive. So I hope to see you guys out there. Going to have my video team out there. We're going to stream the whole thing, right, as these guys are – uh, running this toy drive, taking pictures with the uh, with the with the fans and and the people who are donating the toys. It's going to be a great time. Now, no autographs during that session. It's free to come. Just donate a toy, you'll get your picture. But no autographs during that session. They are going to have an autograph session later on, where they sign those autographs from two thirty to four thirty. But that is a ticketed event, so that's one hundred twenty five dollars per ticket. Uh, some of the guys, there's a list of guys who are only signing trading cards, so be sure to check. The uh, the Champion Circle website, and you'll find that out. It's also at the at the Somerset Collection as well. So you can do both. You can do the the toy drive early from eleven to one, then you can hang out, do some shopping at the Somerset Collection, come back around and do the signing event from two thirty to four thirty. And if you're looking at this on the uh, on the stream, there's a QR code in the top right corner of the flyer. You can find the flyer on the Champion Circle. You can scan that QR code and get your tickets. But this is going to be a great day, some great events, and seeing the Michigan student athletes give back and also use their 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 NIL to benefit others and then also have another NIL opportunity uh, for the entire, you know, look at all those guys that are going to be there. Some of those guys, you know, they, they know. I mean, Blake and JJ and those guys know, man, if I'm here, it helps my teammates mm -hmm. be able to partake in NIL opportunities too. So that's what you love about love this team, man. You love about this thing, so appreciate that, Benjamin. That you put that up there. We got a few things that we got to squeeze in before we get out. Let's go right to right now. My nine to three lions. Uh, hey, Daniel, did you happen to see last week? The lions thing? <laughs> I, I want to know, did you get a chance to check that out? Lions, did you see him? Daniel? Yeah, yeah, hey man, I give credit was credit was due. Y'all got lucky and won on the basically the trick play, you know. When you all the game. Didn't the Lions get up 21 to nothing, Daniel? And what happened after that? It's a long It seemed game. like you were lucky to get back in the game, Daniel. No, that's what a lucky game. game. 28 to 3. You guys run a you have you guys have to run a trick play on us. Have, I thought, have to? Yeah, you had to. So, so <laughs> no, it was a great play. I, I admit it was a great play call. It was a great play call. Jameson got out the gate and man, he was blind, wasn't he? Yeah, he was hey, he was out of there. Hey, when, I saw him, when I saw him take the handle, I was like, oh, it's over. And next thing I know, he's diving in the end zone. That was a beautiful dive, too. It was it was so safe, it seemed like. It seemed DG, like I'm, 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 speaking of safe, I almost made a phone call and did not let him get out of New Orleans good, but I went on and let him make it, man. <laughs> you, you let him live, Daniel. You, yeah, you let, I let him live, live man. Tell him he's diving in the end zone like that again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on. It's going to be so, smoke in the city. So here, here's the thing. We want to talk a little bit about luck. See, I think the Saints are lucky to be in the worst division in the National Football League. Without question. Do you know the Saints? They are in contention for the NFC South crowd at five and seven. Yeah. Do you understand 
that they are just one game back yeah. from the six and six Atlanta Falcons. Do, do you understand that, Daniel? The Atlanta Falcons? No, no, I completely understand it. And when we win the division and the Lions have to come back to New Orleans again for the first round of the playoffs, we'll have this conversation again. So the Lions are nine and three, <laughs> and the Saints are five and seven. If anybody was lucky in that game, should, it, should we be saying it was the Saints? I'm just saying. What are we hey, talking man, about, Daniel? Talk y'all talk. Wild card round. Y'all will be coming back to New Orleans to play a division winner. And we can have this conversation again. They got traded for Derek Carr. Derek Carr. Derek Carr. He's That's bad. the truth. Tom Brady he's was bad. like, man, y'all want to sign me for that dude? You remember he was talking yeah. about? Was like, no, he's bad. He's bad. That's who y'all don't want to sign me for. And I I like Derek Carr, but he just he's he ain't doing it. He ain't getting it done. He's bad. And I don't know if it's the offense. Like a lot, I know as Saints fans, we've had a lot of It might be Jameis. <laughs> Jameis so funny, angry. man. Jameis is funny. Jameis, Jameis is probably gonna be dancing before the next game, just to as like his pre. He's gonna be dancing, and it's gonna be. Then he's gonna go out and throw the ball to the other team three times. But I think it's more peak. I think it's time to. We have to get a new offensive coordinator. I, w- I don't want to say head coach just yet because I actually like Dennis Allen. The defense hasn't been the problem in his tenure as a Saints coach and him, with him being a defensive guy, but we definitely need to revamp our offense. We need to draft, replenish, and replace. It, no matter what happens the rest draft, of this year. Draft, replenish, and replace. We call and it the replace. DRR. My goodness. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Man, we just need to get some help on defense. Get some help on defense in the offseason. That's it. unless JJ's available late in the first round. That's the one thing that make de- make me deviate from my defensive plan. Because that's the dream scenario that you know, if he goes in the draft, that you're able to go. Yeah, see, look at that. Look at that. That's six and six. Six what? and six is first place in the NFC South. That is oh, oh, terrible. wait a minute. Y'all really the only good team in y'all division, too, though. Hey man, the Packers are actually coming on. You see Jordan Love against the Chiefs. <laughs> I hey man, as much as I read it, as much as I hate the Packers, you know, I was like, man, Jordan Love, they made Jordan Love look like Aaron Rodgers in that game. Then he comes back yeah. the next week uh against Pat Mahomes, and he balled out in that game, man. I was I, I color me impressed. Now they were at home. I want to see him be able to keep it up, but I mean, right now. Matt LaFleur is like, see, I told y'all. It took a minute, but he's starting to show a little promise. So, you know, we'll we'll see. I, I'm one to give credit where credit is due. And the Packers are coming on right now. They're actually looking like they could go on a run and make the playoffs. That, hey, Sam, that impressed Dr. Singh just had a great suggestion in the chat. What if the Saints drive J.J. late for a uh, mid to late first round? Well, it's five and seven. It'll probably be more like mid first round. You get to play in the dome? I, I would be in football heaven. <laughs> yeah, I guess I have to have me a Saints jersey at that point. I guess I have to have yes, me sir. a Saints jersey at that point. Yes, so. sir. <laughs> I, hey, I, I, I'll send you one ASAP. <laughs> Not that I would become a Saints fan. I would just be a JJ fan. But, uh, hey, guys, you ever been to the to the Blue Leopard crowd the Blue Lep? Love the Blue Lep. Oh, I'm definitely like, are you kidding me? It's right now. It's right down the street from the brown jug, baby. Yeah, Got a lot baby. of the same food, but some oh, yeah. different stuff that That's I like. Because old Perry Perry Pericos, man. I mean, he's gonna done. Hey, so Ben, can you do me a favor and drop the track, my friend? Can you do that for me one quick second? It's coming. So I bring that up in the I Love Ann Arbor segment brought to you by friends at Destination Ann Arbor because the Blue Lep is going to be one of the stops on the My Ann Arbor tour with Will Johnson. As Devin just said, right down the street from the Brown Jug, a lot of the same food, great, great ambiance in there. I did an event in there a couple of years ago when Michigan Sweet 16 victory over uh, Texas A&M. Watch that with the people over there. It was a blast. The atmosphere was outstanding. Uh, you know, obviously the, the beer was was flowing quite liberally. You can do that at a at a remote event like that. But the food great, the burgers are great, the drinks are great, the atmosphere is outstanding. 
but he's going to be doing it. I can't get specific as to the event that Will is going to have there. We'll give you some more details on that. What I can say is he's talking about doing the event with Samaj Morgan. I can't say that. <laughs> hey, I love Maj. I said this before. I will say it again. If I were in another life and I were a Michigan football player, my mentality would be that of young Samaj Morgan. My, that's my dude. I love Samaj Morgan. I, I I love the the fact that my man got on the microphone and Derek Moore came behind him and said, best freshman in the country. He said, oh, oh yeah, no cap. He stopped he, his he, complete he, sentence and said, oh, let's be clear, no cap. He ain't lying. He ain't lying. <laughs> best freshman in the country right here. I said, yes, you got to love that. And so one of the things we got into, I know I'm going off on a tangent. I think we're going to have both of those guys at the Blue Level. We'll be there for uh, for for Will's, you know, tentative event. We'll keep you posted on that uh, in the days coming up. And, Ben, if you can bring up some Blue Lip. Uh, yeah, exact. There we go. See, you see, how, you see how producer Ben works. Absolutely. It's going to be a, a great, great time over there that we're going to have when we drop by right down the street from the Brown Jug. Uh, the food and drinks are outstanding over there. I always go straight to the basement. Yeah, TVs throughout. The basement is outstanding. I've yeah, I've seen uh, yeah, been to parties in the basement uh, down there. It is just a great place and a great vibe, and we're going to bring that vibe to you on the Mayan Arbor shoot with Will Johnson. Now, again, they're going to be having an event. Tentatively, we'll bring you more details on that coming up, but Samaj, hey. man. Sam, at this point, Samajas need to be mic'd up during the game. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well. Might as well. I mean, because if we get in with that kind of thing on post game, imagine what kind of goal we could have during a game. We got to. Hey, let's get a let's get a weekly correspondence with Samaj. Oh my doing? mama. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so you know Samaj coming on dropping dimes at some point, right? Oh God! I talked to you. I already talked to Samaj Senior about it, and I say, hey, man, now we're gonna promote this event. I love it. We're gonna promote this event for him when when it's finalized. But we are gonna get Samaj on on dropping dimes, no matter what. Stay. On your mama? On my mama? That's on oh, my mama. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! As soon as they start selling his jersey in the bookstore, I'm going to buy one. I, yes, I'm about to, they need to make some on my mama shirts. Listen, listen, though. No, we talked about this, Dan. You tell me if you agree. Because I I feel it's the same thing on the basketball side of things. I just feel like you got to have that element on your team. Every guy can't be like that because every guy's not like that. You mm -hmm. know, if, if you have every guy on your team that's acting like Samaj Morgan, 90% of them fake it because everybody not cut like that. So, but you got to have some 10% real ones like that that are going to show you that are going they're going to sweat confidence they're going to ooze yeah. confidence like everything they do they I know I'm right I know this is the right step to take right I know this is the right thing to say yeah. I know this is the right thing to do even if nobody else knows you're using that word right very loosely <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. it's a matter of interpret matter for interpretation right but right. he's certain that he's right you need a few guys on your roster that are like that. And that's why I feel like this, this element that he brings to the table, even as a freshman, I think it's a value to this team beyond what he can do as a playmaker. No, two things. You're, you're absolutely right. Right. First, the first one is I've, I've heard you guys say it all since, since it happened, you absolutely need guys like that. I prefer you have more than one guy like that. So for me, I think that those guys are essential because for one, it brings a, a, a diversity in thought in, in within the locker room, right? So that allows you to grow when you have a diversity in thought when you have guys like that. And then from a basketball perspective, I as a college coach for two years, I recruited guards, recruited point guards. I'm not recruiting my point guard if he's not like that. I want my point guards to be just like Samaj Morgan. I want you to be extremely confident. I want you to be extremely uh I want you to be uh, extremely communicative to everybody around you about what you can do, what you're capable of, and how confident in yourself because that spreads amongst your teammates. You know, when you walk into, like, 
as he becomes more of a bigger contributor to the program, when guys see Samaj walk in the building with them, they're gonna know they have a shot just because Samaj is coming. Right. That's just that's normally how it works. So that's how JJ McCarthy is. Like those guys are extremely confident because he's extremely confident in himself and everybody around him. So it it, it permeates throughout the team. And I that's mm. As a leader, that's what I as as a recruiting point guards, recruiting teammates. That's what I look for. I want guys that are extremely confident. Hey, Daniel, don't nobody say that permeate like you said that permeate. <laughs> <laughs> it permeates throughout the team. Ooh, hey, now you got to use it on one of your broadcasts, Devin. Oh, oh no, that's one of my words. That's I'm, 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 I love it. You know what I mean? You know, my favorite word obviously is indubitably. Oh. You know, it's my favorite. <laughs> without a doubt, you know, very clear. Wait, 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 wait. Say it with the Stephen A. voice. Stephen A. voice. Indubitably. <laughs> nah, that was a hard timer. That was a hard timer. We got to get him on some, yeah. some uh, voice advertisement, Sam. Hey, man, you can do it, Stephen A. You did that, Stephen A. <laughs> talking to Liz. is like, you know, Liz Robbins, who we also going to get on Dropping Dimes. We're going to start having guests on Dropping Dimes uh, once we get. Uh, deeper into the rotation. We're going to get more into basketball. Devin, I know you got to cut out and get to the airport, man. So we don't want to make you miss your private jet. So <laughs> go ahead, go ahead and, and get ready. I know your limo driver waiting. So go ahead and, and get prepared. They got so you just pillows in the on me, Sam. You just going to keep on lying on me. <laughs> hey, put the mink. Let us see you put the mink on before you walk out. First of all, I'm in Orlando. My mink is at the crib. Oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> hey, you can wear mink in Orlando. It ain't hot. You too cool hey, for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be sweating like a mug. This man is hot. He is cold in the desert. You don't know that about, De about Devin by now. <laughs> we see man. it every week when he comes in. It is people why, why do I feel why am I always feeling attacked when I'm with you saying you're not attacked, why? but I'm just saying why am I man, always getting attacked? You got you got people thinking we be freezing you out in the studio like it's cold all the time. Now it did <laughs> it, it get cold that one day in my office. That one day, because I got a vent over here, and the, the, the vent is connected to somebody else's office when they turn it on, then it blows on me too. So I got a heater in here to offset that. But other than that, I mean I'm not in here wearing a chinchilla like you every week. Like, come on, man. So it look like too sweet. <laughs> hey, after Michigan beat Bama, I will be wearing my mink. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, hey, man, go, go catch your jet. And then, uh, you know, we'll see you when you get back over here. All right. Love my people, all my people in the comments, all my drop it downs people. As you know, I love you. Actually, as you know, I love you. <laughs> I love your support. I love how much you love dropping dimes with me, Sam. And Daniel, Michigan greats in our own different rights. I got to go. I'll holler at you guys next week. <laughs> Are there any ladies in this? Are there any ladies in the screen? Any ladies in the chat? Man, it got to be. The man has been looking for this invitation for to Hawaii for some time now. So we'll see if that actually comes to fruition. But Daniel, we needed to get into some basketball, man. Both yes, college, sir. both college and pro. Let's start off on the college side of things where you know I know you pay attention to Big Ten basketball, you pay attention to, to Michigan basketball. Uh specifically, I, I look at the two teams here in state and eerily similar records. Michigan yes. at four and five, Michigan State at four and four. Uh probably. Uh, the expectation for Michigan at this point, but even with that, I think you got fans kind of feeling a little disappointed given how close the last two games were. One at home against Indiana last night and the feeling being that, okay, man, they could close this team out at home. And then the one against Oregon where they got to, you know, seem like they're going to be able to pull it out late. You got a turnover. You got a, you know, a defensive decision late that seemed to contribute to giving Oregon the edge. Yeah. No, this these last two games have been pretty tough. Uh the one at Oregon, uh, I think they both have kind of come down to to game situations. You know, I think in in practice a lot, you try to practice game situations as coaches and as players. I think one of the things that's kind of put them behind the eight ball uh, uh, a little bit the last, especially the Oregon game and then last game is that they kind of switch defenses at kind of crucial times in the game, right? 
I think that last possession against Oregon, they came out, they were playing, man. They came out at uh, Burnett, got uh, beat off the dribble. He got hit in the face and got beat off the dribble and they ended up getting the easy play. I think they kind of overreacted to that. I know a lot of times coaches want to, hey, let's change defenses in the timeout because the team is over there drawing something up to go against the defense that we were just in. So, hey, let's switch defenses and try to give them a different look so they can't run what they drew up in the huddle over on the other side. I think sometimes you can kind of overcoach in those situations. And I think it knows that we came out against Oregon. They came out in the zone after the timeout, gave up a three-pointer, pretty much a wide open three-pointer. And then they switched defenses again against IU last night and gave up like six straight points against the zone. So it was like it was at a it was a close ball game. It's one of those situations where I think, you know, that's like we always talk about toughness and physicality with the football team, right? I think that's one of those moments as a basketball team, you got to kind of step up and show your toughness and physicality. Like, hey, we're gonna stick to our man-to-man principles because this is what we practice the most, right? Most I don't think they practice, I don't know what I'm not gonna try to guess what they practice, but most teams don't practice zone enough to be really good at it in those moments. So I think you should, you know, kind of stick to your principles at those moments and, and guard people a little better. So yeah, I, I think I don't know if you you said this or I'm just thinking it while you were talking, but I felt like going zone against Oregon was a reaction to the fact that they their defense was getting broken down and open looks were coming off of it. And so I was like, okay, man, we got to figure out how to how to stop penetration here. Let's 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 say, hey, man, let's go go zone and try to try to limit it that way. That, that it didn't work, obviously right. to your point. But still, I, I, you know, novice eye, I'm kind of like, okay, I get why they decided to go that route. Like most of the time, Sam, when you're getting whipped off the dribble, <laughs> like first of all, when you switch to, to like college players tend to, when you switch from man to zone, they tend to kind of tend to and relax for a little bit for a second when you first jump into the zone anyway. So if you're getting whipped off the dribble, like you said, left and right, when you switch to the zone, it's not going to get better. <laughs> like now these guys that are already beating you off the dribble with a little bit of resistance in their face kind of get a little bit more of a free run. So now it's going to be even harder to stop them off the dribble. And now you're so now you're opening yourself up to different cuts or different actions to where they may get you looking one way and slip a shooter behind, which kind of Oregon did, and that guy has a wide open jump shot. So as a as a coach and a player, I was always a big fan of staying in our man to man defenses in those situations. Well, they just need to improve defensively all the way around. Yeah, you know, for whatever, sure. Whatever their defensive identity is, that part needs to get better. Cause as much as they got Gave up open looks against Oregon. They got beat up in the paint against Indiana. But yeah. Indiana had, what, 58, 50, 50 something points in the paint? I'm like, man, yeah. some team scored 50 points in the game. All the points came in the paint. Yeah, like, big fella was impressive for IU. <laughs> like, man. And, and so, what I what I was especially interested in hearing your take on mm. that, you, so you saw Dougie go off against yeah. Oregon. I mean, he was on one that night. Then last night, it was tough. What was he? Three for eleven. Yeah. Twelve from the field. Lane seems seem to bother him, and I'm, you know, I'm curious what what do you think the key is to making his his production be more consistent? He's not gonna go for thirty every night. That's not what I'm talking no, about. No, no, no. But but being in a situation where he's not, you know, basically rendered moot or nullified by size, are there things they can do? To, to get him better looks or to get him open or to get him free in games like that where clearly you got uh you know lengthy defenders good yeah. good uh, you got you got guys in the paint you got good help defense just they were doing a lot of things to to disrupt him and so what do you think what do you think about ways in which you can make things a little easier for him uh some nights yeah I think uh what's a couple of things right I think for one going from Oregon to IU for one, you're playing, you're going to a conference game. IU is going to be much more prepared for you than Oregon probably was leading up to that game. It's a early season conference game. IU is their coaching staff are probably pre- prepared for everything Michigan was going to do and vice versa, right? It's conference play. These games are always going to be much tougher than going out to Oregon or Oregon coming to Michigan, vice versa. So that's one, that's one part of it. So and I think he, this is his sec, this is, he's a veteran now, so he should understand that. Second part is I think for him, when I've seen him be successful is one, when they're getting out in transition, he's able to push the pace and push to get the team out in transition and, and make plays against numbers. And two, when he's in those uh, those Zoom actions or dribble handoffs and that, that they, first of all, Michigan runs more Zoom and dribble handoffs than 
probably anybody I've seen in college basketball, which is not a bad thing, right? But I think the more he's involved in those and he's able to create, get a little bit of se separation created by play design to where he can get paint touches and get two feet in the paint and make plays for himself or other people, he'll be even better. So I think those two things, getting out and transition a little bit more, pushing the pace, and then being involved in a few more dribble handoffs a game instead of, uh, I think I saw it at the end of the last game against IU. He, got, he ended up getting fouled. He made a nice move. But he had to be the guy one on one from the wing, like it's almost like an ISO situation. I wouldn't put him in very many of those situations. I would put him more in a position where he's coming to using has a ball screen or a dribble handoff, the way he can get separation created by play design. And he can use his speed and quickness and and his ability to make plays. They did a lot of that against Oregon. I think it kind of IU kind of took him out of that a little bit last night. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Uh, you got Jalen Llewellyn back now. Uh, you know, hopefully as he works himself back into the uh into the flow of things, that will ease some of the pressure. I think fatigue has something to do with it sometimes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so to, to give sure. him a, give him a bit of a blow at times, I think could be a, a big deal for him. Uh just figuring out more of what you gotta remember, this is a team that I uh, got have components to it or has components to it. That are still relatively new. Uh, Olivier Kahn, one Damari Brunette, uh, Trey Jackson off the bench. who made a nice move last night going to the rim. Uh, yeah. It was fouled. So I, I, I gotta gotta remember that you do have some pieces to the puzzle right. that are still kind of kind of meshing and melding. And that's uh, where point guard play becomes even more imperative, right? He has to be able to to tie all of those pieces, those that uh, tie all of those pieces together as the leader and the ball handler of that group. So I know as a guy that played 38, 39 minutes a game myself for four years straight <laughs> without much backup, he better be getting his rest, Sam. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And that's that's a challenge for him. If I talked to Phil Martelli this morning, he said, Look, yeah, he scored 30, but it wasn't enough to win, so it wasn't enough. Yeah. Right. So that's that's the mentality that you gotta have. Uh, as as his coach and the mentality he has to have as mm. a player as well. Uh, but you look over at Michigan State real quick because I want to get some uh, NBA talk in before we get out. You look over at Michigan State real quick, and it's like, man, uh, no one expected them to be 4-4. Four and four. They were a top-five team at the beginning of the season. And Wisconsin goes into East Lansing and basically pushes them around. Uh, and it's do A.J. Store was balling balling daniel i mean getting in the paint he was knocking down threes i mean he he was a he was a bona fide bucket getter like give me the rock and let me go to work was how he was getting down on michigan state last night i'm like man where did this come from <laughs> where, where did this come from this looks like a like he's gonna be a dude in the big 10 this year yeah <laughs> Yeah, now those guys have they have a, a long way to go as well. Right. And I think that's one thing we've seen that from Izzo teams before, though. We've seen them start this way and improve as the season goes on. We've seen that from them just over his tenure there. That's happened a number of years. Not so much, not so much lately, but when you have when you have a track record of I wouldn't say making players better individually, but actually have a track record of building teams and make sure teams progress through the season. They'll get better defensively for sure. I'm pretty sure he'll break out the helmets and shoulder pads and the knee pads and Oklahoma drill and have guys all over the floor. And they'll get better defensively. They'll get tougher and they'll get they'll get away with a little bit more fouling as conference <laughs> as conference play goes on. So they'll get better. But I think both 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 in state squads, Michigan and Michigan State, they definitely have have some room for improvement on on really both ends of the floor going forward. They they're gonna have to. Or it's gonna be a long season. No doubt, no doubt. So segueing over to the NBA for a second, uh, Daniel, before we get out of here, because uh, my Pistons are, are, are abysmal. I've never seen. <laughs> and they, they've had some bad seasons, uh, but it's never been this bad. Uh, yeah. They they feel like, you know, the first sign of adversity, and that's it. <laughs> you know, they just crumble. And I think a lot of it has to do with role definition. And I can't remember if we talked about this on air or not. But I just my initial problem was their their usage of of Jay Nivey. Like, why are we bringing Jay Nivey off the bench? They seem to fix that. Mm -hmm. you know, they at least playing him the kind of minutes uh, and the kind of role that 
you should be playing him. And there's no way Killian Hayes should be getting minutes over him. He's not anymore. Now I want to go over to Kay Cunningham. I just think to continue to force him, to, to try to force feed him as A, a point guard, and B, an isolation player, mm-hmm. is doing him and this team a disservice because I think he's neither. I don't think he's a point guard. And I don't think he's an isolation player night in and night out. He might get that against some teams, but he's he's neither quick nor explosive. No, he's a strong guy, can play through contact, right? He he can he can he he has a nice uh you know has a nice soft touch. He can finish in the mid range, but you know to to think that you're gonna be able to throw him the ball on the wing and say go to work uh, and have him win consistently, I just he doesn't look like that to me. Now, you tell me. You you played the game, you watched the game, you coached the game. Mm-hmm. Do you does he is he a point guard to you? Is he an iso ball guy to you? I think I, just, I think I don't see it. in today's NBA, I think he is a point guard just based on the way the game is played, right? But I don't think he's an iso player. He's not explosive enough. He's not he has really good skill, but he's not explosive enough or quick enough laterally, I think, to be a a, a, a very effective ISO basketball player in the NBA. But I think, Sam, to your like your overall question of what's wrong with the Pistons, for one, they've drafted a lot of really young guys that don't know how to play basketball. And that's so and sadly, that's the bottom third of the league. They're filled with young guys who one year of Oats overtime elite or one year of college, or when I know after my first year of college, no matter how talented you are, you still don't really know how to play basketball. Not the way, not winning championship level basketball. And I think, unfortunately, these guys get drafted based off potential and what scouts think they can be way down the line. And they're not, and you're watching them, and you're watching them in real time learn how to play basketball for real. Like high school basketball for Kay Cunningham wasn't real basketball. He's much more talented than everybody that he played against. College basketball, kind of the same thing. So now you're in the NBA level and you have to, play quality and then they're gonna get me wrong the quality of basketball in the nba isn't great compared to other eras but you still have to play a certain level of basketball have a certain level of iq to go along with the speed of the game the, the strength and the force that these guys play with at a championship it's just these guys you're watching the pistons take those lumps in real time so if the pistons are willing to sit back and wait for these guys to mature and develop and learn these hard lessons you might come out on the other side of it with a team like okc but, but you, know, you know, it may take you a know while. What did it to me? That made me think, man. It's I, I was demoralized by them losing to another team who doesn't know how to win. They they got beat bad by the Wizards at yeah. home. I mean, have you watched that team? Have you seen? Yeah, have you seen <laughs> JP just be like, hey, 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 I got this. This is my team. It's like, dog, really. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they just they the, the, the Wizards just have a couple guys that are older than <laughs> older than what the Pistons have. You have Jay, Jordan Poole who's been through a championship run and Kyle Kuzma the same. So they have guys who've been around a little longer. But that's what you that's what you have to look forward to if those guys don't learn those lessons and apply them the right way. You end up being the Wizards. If you have guys that learn to develop and grow together, you might end up with a team like OKC that looks like a young up and coming contender. So well, give I them a little I- more time, Sam. I just look at Orlando. It's a, a team that was in a similar position to, to the Pistons a couple years ago. Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, you you see how they put that together? Yeah. I mean, Franz is turning into a, a flat art. Oh, he is killing it yes. down there. Paulo Banchero's looking like a like a number one overall pick. Like their yes. dudes are looking like dudes. And I just feel like you look at the Pistons, I mean, they're just as young. They're just as young. And they're in case defense, like he's probably playing the toughest position in the league, right? The the guard slash wings where he slides over and maybe play the wing. That's the toughest position in the league, right? Paolo Banchero, he's gonna he might have 10, 10 to 15 nights a, a year when he's playing against who is this guy? He right, because he's a he's a big. So it's a little they were able to they they were able for one, fortunate enough to be able to draft a big and then get another big in France who's turned out to be really good. And then draft his brother, who's a 6'9", 6'10", versatile wing player. So they've been able to construct their roster a little better. I agree with you on that. But I think it's just – you just got to be patient, Sam. Give give, give give those guys a little bit more time before you before you get down. Okay. On. 
They got two wins. <laughs> And they got the worst record in the national basketball. No, when I say time, it won't be this year. <laughs> I hear it that. Won't be this year. <laughs> well, what will be this year is when we, as a crew, we get together for a My Ann Arbor tour and our friends at Golden Limo. Who you know, DG he had to go to see his man Daquan Finn uh, play at Toledo. So Al Borges did the bus. The Borges bus went down, and the Borges bus was sold out. Don't know if y'all oh, know that wow. Borges bus was sold out. Uh, people said they had a great time on the Golden Limo bus. We need to get on the Golden Limo party bus if you don't know about the Golden Experience. If you could queue up the Golden Experience, Ben, and they can hear what the Golden Experience is all about with Golden Limo uh, from Sean Duval, the best transportation service in Southeast Michigan and beyond. Because one call to Golden not only gets your transportation taken care of right here in Southeast Michigan, but when you get to your destination, Golden will have a car or a vehicle waiting for you. That could be a destination here domestically or internationally. As I experienced when I went to Paris and Rome, you know, we had to take a, one of those one of those Sprinter vans to the airport. We had a Sprinter van waiting for us when we landed in Rome. We had a Sprinter van waiting for us when we landed in Paris. That is the Golden Limo difference. So if you have any transportation needs, uh, if whether it's airport transport, uh, it could be it could be uh, like the bus that went down to the Big Ten championship game, uh, the the bus that the parents, many of the Michigan football parents took uh, going over to the Penn State game, or you know smaller bus excursions like we're going to have when we get the party bus, Golden Limo is the place. So, Ben, if you can queue up my friend, the Golden Experience. So the car service is, is kind of the main, you know, going back and forth to the airport, we do that between 50 and 100 times a day. People say, you go to the airport? We're like, yeah, a lot. <laughs> um, but we, we do that in almost every one of our vehicles, starting from our, our lower end um, uh, uh, value proposition with our mode car brand. Uh -huh. um, it's not the luxury brand. It's more of a uh, on-demand service. And we can uh, be a little bit more flexible with that, especially on the pricing side. Uh, but then we go from there to our executive and our luxury sedans and our luxury SUVs. And once you get there, um, you're talking about a Lincoln uh, Continental, uh, a Lincoln Navigator. You can get in a Cadillac Escalator, there's two Continentalis, which are so nice. And uh, um, our chauffeurs and those, it's such a smooth ride. I mean, you could have a cup of hot coffee in your hand and you, you, you feel the difference yeah, yeah for sure for sure <laughs> so um we just uh, added the aviators to our fleet and uh those aviators have been really really nice it's an suv uh but i'm more at a sedan style so um those have been really really godsends for our uh we treat them like sedans we don't treat them like the big navigator suv mm -hmm. and but from there we go into our our bigger luxury vehicles so you start talking about our um, our minivans, there are minibuses, I'm sorry. Our minibuses are 24 to 36 passengers. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do so much team transportation, so much um, K-12 school transportation in those units. They don't need 56 people rolling down the road. It's usually 20, 25 people that we take around. Yeah. Um, those are cool, by the yeah, way. They are. We've, we've uh, upgraded those and replaced those. Uh, we do have some uh, that are at the end of their their life but as we um as we continue to replace our fleet we try and do it about uh with those bigger vehicles every five to seven years but our cars are going every three years every three years i mean the auto industry keeps us on our toes because they change a model out and then all of a sudden now we're following through we have to change our model out mm -hmm. it makes my marketing person tina she um tina from rapport marketing she just gives me this look like what do you mean i have to change the vehicle on the car? <laughs> what's it just it's a car no it's not just a car <laughs> this is a this is the 2024 model and the 2024 model is what we have to show on our website mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah not we went out tina showed us around all the vehicles oh nice I got a chance to see your. We saw the aviators. Yeah. Went around there. Uh, saw the navigator, and then we saw 
not only with your 24 passenger bus, but we saw a party bus. <laughs> we saw a party bus. And so I mentioned that because the Steady Dropping Dimes crew is coming to town. Oh, Devin nice. Gardner and Daniel Horton. Love We're it. going to be going to a number of places around Ann Arbor. Going to get some suggestions suggestions from yeah. you, by the way. Well, and we just, if we're going to ride around town, I know Tina said ride on the trolley, which no. you, you didn't mention the trolley no, yet. No, no, not the trolley. But the party bus. Yeah, you need to get into I that. mean, you get on that thing and there's, you You yeah. feel like the party has just started yeah. as soon as you step on the bus. Yeah, you uh, you don't have to go and pay cover charge and do all, you just, the party's right there. But we're going to partner with Destination Ann Arbor, okay? Okay. And they're going to just hook us up with, here's where we're going to go. And my guys, they know the town and they know, but Destination Ann Arbor, they just got this beautiful sense about uh, this town and, and where we go and what we're going to do. So, so we'll, we'll highlight that coming up. That's going to be a lot of fun. One of the things, so as we were sitting there, Tina said, you know, Sean just got two new buses. Like, kind of like you just, oh, you just go to the store and pick up a new pair of shoes. <laughs> Sean, Sean, Sean just got two new, <laughs> two new buses, right? Yeah. And I mean, you talk about the lap of luxury. Yeah, that is definitely the case when you right. I mean, you think about how the Michigan. All right, Daniel. Uh, people get the get the idea because they just went on the bus that Al Borges took to. So the dropping dimes crew, they already know about the bus because a lot of them rode it as they went down <laughs> with. Went down with Al Borges again. GoldenLimo.com is the website for all your transportation needs, whether it is the uh, the transports, the buses, the the SUVs, uh, the uh, the luxury cars that they have for their car service. It is second to none. It is safety. It is experience. It is luxury. It is excellence. That's what you get with Golden Limo at GoldenLimo.com. So get them for any of your transportation needs. That is going to do it for us on this edition of Steady Dropping Dimes. So we're going to get uh, coming up, we're going to get Will Johnson back on to reflect upon the uh, reflect, reflect upon the season, uh, to look ahead to the matchup with Alabama. And of course, we're going to get young Samaj Morgan on. And we still have to get our nice My Ann Arbor trip with the crew from Steady Dropping Dimes together. So that's going to be happening in the next few weeks as well. We're going to be letting you know some of the places that we're going to be. If you have suggestions of stops that we should make in Washtenaw County, whether it be places to eat, places to drink, places to see, drop those in the comments and we'll see. You just might see the Steady Dropping Dimes crew stop by some of those locations. Maybe we might even see you there if you tell us when you're going to be there, all right? That's going <laughs> to do it for this episode. Looking forward to next time. Thanks for watching another edition of Steady Dropping Dimes. Yes, sir.